around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> You're hiding. Come on out. We got business to take care of. You just keep on riding, old Harker. Well, come on out that barn, Stokes. You got to settle up. I ain't doing no business with you, Oak. You lost the right to be choosy when that fire burned your feed crop, and you know it. I can't see how that fire's any affair of yours. You borrowed money in that crop of yours, didn't you? Sure, from your paw. Well, you can just pay it back to me. I ain't going to do it. Your paw's waited a long time, but he'll get his money. He ain't the kind to come riding up here a week after the fire to collect it, neither. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm doing it first. Well, you ain't going to get it from me. Oh. Now, you listen here, Stokes. I took over Paul's business. Everything that's coming to him is coming to me now. You mean you foreclosed on your own, Paul? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a paper here, all stamped legal, says I can collect what's owing to Paul. Right now. Uh, not for me, you can't. I ain't got it. Well, no, ain't that a shame. Guess I'll just... Take along something, make up for it. Hey, you look here, sure old. Got much around here, Stokes. Yes, I'll take a look around, maybe out back, out the corral, maybe. Now you stay away from my horse. So you recollect you got yourself a pretty good stud horse. Why, well, you mean? You recollect I made you an offer for him about a week back, a good fair offer. I wouldn't sell you one of my horses if I had to starve for you. Ain't gonna worry about selling me nothing. I'm just gonna take that horse. You can't and do it. We'll you... call that dead old square, Stokes. I don't want to have to call the law down on you and take over your land. Well, I ain't going to allow it. You ain't going to do nothing but go on in there and lead me out that horse. No, but it ain't right. It's as right as it's going to get. The law is with me, Stokes. Go on, get along now. Well, fetch me that horse. I'll go in there and fetch you myself. I've been wanting to throw a rope on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll get him. Yeah. It's more like it. But don't let me hear about you mistreating him like you do your other horses. What do you do about it? I'll come and get him. I'll take him back. Not after he's mine. You hurt him and I'll come and get him. I'll get him if I have to kill you. <laughs> Because Elijah Cuddlestone was what you might call a grassroots politician, his support was constantly in demand. Here's part of his public reply to one such request. I will not, I will not climb aboard his bandwagon. I say, I say, his bandwagon is one I will never be on. Do you hear? Yeah, I mean, I won't support a man whose policies never have, that is, they have never reflected the will of the people. Well, Elijah laid it right on the line, didn't he? The phrase on or aboard the bandwagon that he used had a political origin that was literal. Politicians and local leaders actually would climb aboard the bandwagon that carried the band and various vote-for type signs used by campaigning politicos in parades and so forth. In this manner, they physically displayed their support for the individual and his cause. 
even though the band, the wagon, and the practice were long familiar to pre-election politics in America, the phrase dates only from around the turn of the century. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir, like I say, there's times when a man just sort of sinks back into himself and thinks about things, you know. Uh-huh. Yes, sir, it comes over me ever so often. It's a time when I get to studying and figuring and don't want to talk much. It's kind of lost in thoughts, you might say. Yeah. I declare sometimes I go on being quiet like this for days, Mr. Dillon, days at a time. I don't hardly say nothing at all. Just sit back and think about the world and all that. Don't hardly talk at all. You ever get that way, Mr. Dillon? Not talking? Guess you didn't hear me, Mr. Dillon, ask you a question. I say, do you ever get that uh, way? I'm sorry, not... Chester. I guess I was just sunk back in myself thinking and not talking. Well, now, you see, that's what happens to me, too. I no. get to the... Well, somebody sure riding up front street awful fast, ain't they? Yeah. Uh, that's a runaway horse, Chester. Come on, let's catch him. Yeah. I sure was. Don't worry about selling me nothing. I'm just going to take this. You can't and do it. we'll you call do... that dead old square, Stokes. Because I don't want to have to... Him? Yeah. Them quirt marks go right through his hide. Those aren't quirt marks, Chester. This horse has been bull whipped. Oh, now, who would do a thing like that? I don't know, but I'm sure going to find out... Come on, let's take him over to the livery stable. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on, old man. We'll get you patched up good as new. Oh, my. Hello, man. Chester. Oh, hold, oh, Doc. Doc. Ah, <laughs> what do you think? That's it. Oh. Somebody did quite a job on that horse. You know who it is? No, Doc, I don't. I just found him running. And whoever it is, I think he'd be ashamed to claim him. You taking him over to the stable? Yeah, I figured I'd leave him there and see who comes after him. Good, I'll come along. I think I have some stuff that'll make him feel better. Oh, you have? Oh, that's fine, Doc. A man who'll do a thing like that ought to be whipped himself. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind doing the job. I'll take him on over, Chester. You go down after the mail, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll meet you back at the office, huh? All right, sir. Come on. Hello, Marshal. Doc? Hello, Marshal. Marshal. Where'd you get that one? I was hoping you'd know where he came from, Moss. He's a runaway. I've never seen him before. He sure carved up some, though, ain't he? Yeah. Doc's going to look him over. I'll put him in a stall for you. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave him here with you, Moss. I figure his owner will come and claim him. All right, Marshal. I want you to do something for me, if you will. What's that? I'm going to take his saddle and his bridle. Why, sure, Marshal. And whoever claims the horse, you send him over to me to pick him up, huh? Besides, at the rate you're selling it tonight, looks like you might run out. <laughs> the boys are worked up a real good thirst, all right. Well, that doesn't exactly make you mad, does it? No. Not as long as they can pay for it. Marshal! Marshal Dillon! Oh, hello, Dan. Uh, Kitty, you know Dan Stokes, oh, don't sure. you? Oh, sure. Hello, Dan. Have oh. a chair. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You want a beer, Dan? Oh, no, no thanks, Miss Kitty. 
Uh, Marshal, I got something to ask you. Well, what is it, Dan? I want to know something, Marshal, uh, legal-like. Well, I'll help you if I can. Uh, I want to know, uh, can a man come up with a paper in his hand and take your horse? Can he do that, Marshal? Well, that depends, Dan. Did you owe him something? No, not him, Marshal. Not ever him. He just wanted that stud horse. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, you better tell me about it. Well, it's, it's that old Parker. I never owed him nothing, but I did owe his paw. He says he took over his paw's business and he come with a paper and took my horse. Had he tried to buy your horse? Yeah, he sure had, but I wouldn't sell. Not to him. Oh, why not? Because he's a mean man, Marshal. A mean man with animals. I don't sell my stock to people like him. Now I'm going to get him back. I'd like to do it legal-like, but I ain't too particular. Yeah. Uh, Dan, what did your horse look like? Oh, he was a real good stud horse, Marshal. A big roan with a blaze. I raised him from a foal. No man's going to harm him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Dan, uh, I'll look into it. Now, Harker may be within his rights, but uh, uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, Marshal, uh, you know Oat Harker? Uh, you might say that we've had kind of an introduction, yeah. Well, I'd like to stay on the right side of the law, but I don't aim to have that horse hurt, and that's for certain. Well, <clears throat> thanks, Marshal. Goodbye, Miss Kitty. Goodbye, Dan. So long, Dan. Matt, was that the horse you told me about? The runaway you found this morning? Yeah. Are you going to tell Dan Stokes about it? I'm going to wait and see if old Harker shows up to claim him, Kitty. I sweep out this cussed office 40 times a day. Prairie down the float glass of the Hey! Then they will. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, mister. Why don't you watch what you're doing? Well, yeah, I was only sweeping the dirt out the door, and you just happened to walk in at the wrong time. Mm. Where's the marshal? Yeah, well, he's down having some breakfast. I expect he'll be back in a few minutes. Go on, get him. Well, now, just I a minute. I said, go on, get the marshal. You look here who you're telling to go and get somebody. Somebody want to see me? <laughs> Mr. Dillon, this Never man mind. says he... Never mind. I'll do my own talking. Well, suppose you do it then, mister. What do you want? I hear you got my saddle and bridle. Your name, old Harker. How do you know? Now, you got quite a reputation, Mr. Harker. For handling horses, anyway. Well, that's my business. Give me my saddle. I want to ask you something, Harker. Did you give that horse a beating? What a man does to his horse is his own business, ain't it? You got something to prove that he's your horse? <laughs> yeah. Old man Stokes come crying to you, huh? All right, Marshal, I got this paper. Hey, go on, look at it. All drawn up by Lawyer Reeves. It's a good paper. Uh-huh. You really hogtied old Stokes to get that horse, didn't you? I get what I want. Yeah. So you can half kill it, huh? Marshal, that's my horse. What I do to him is my affair. Now, you just give me my saddle and my bridle, I can get out of here. All right, so is your horse, but I want to tell you something, Harker. If I ever hear you beating him or any other stock of yours, I'm going to come after you. You got a law about a man and his horse? I'll find one. Hmm. Chester, give him his saddle. Yonder it is. Now you get out of here. Sure didn't know you had such a kind heart, Marshal. Mr. Dillon, is that horse sure enough his? Well, that's what the paper said, Chester. Oh, morning, Mac. Oh, hold on. Chester. Doc. Say, Matt, uh, who was that fellow that came out of here carrying a saddle and a bridle? That was old Harker, Doc. He's on his way over to the livery stable to get that runaway. It's his horse. Well, it's too late. What do you mean? The horse is gone. 
What? And I went over there a little while ago to see how he was coming along, and, and he wasn't there. Well, where is he? Stolen, according to Moss Grimmick. But it seemed to me he didn't care at all. He, he said he figured the horse would be better off back where he belonged. Yeah. All right, come on, Chester. Get your stuff together. Yes, sir. You know where you're going, Mac? Yeah, Doc, and I just hope I'm not too late. get there in time, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Old Harker had a few minutes on us, and that's all he'd need. Yeah. To ride right on out to the corral, huh? Wait, Mr. Dillon. Right. Look over there on the ground. Where? Right. That's old man Stokes. Yeah. Oh. Dan? He's all beat up, Mr. Dillon. Dan. It's Matt Dillon, Dan. Can you get on your feet? Uh, sure. Uh, Here, let me help you. Sure, Marshal. How would Harker do this to you? Keep, keep him away from my horse, Marshal. He's back there with my horse. You, you kill that horse, sure. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm all right. You you go get him, Marshal. Keep him away from my horse. All right, Dan, all right. You just stay here and take it easy, huh? Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Look there, he was right. Good Harker's in the corral after that horse. Well, from here, it's hard to tell who's after who. Um, that stud's really going after him. Harker's going to have trouble roping him. That horse has gone plumb crazy, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Harker! He found that, Dillon, in my horse. I'm going to get out and go do it. Ah. Harker, that horse will kill you. Yeah. No horse living I can't handle. Yeah, you devil. Yes. Mr. Dillon, he's working him right back into that loose fence. In. Yeah. Harker! Look out, Harker! They're down, Mr. Dillon. They're both down. Oh, come on. Looks like the horse got a broke leg. Yeah. It would try to drag Harker out from under him. Yes, sir. You get over on that side. Yeah, here, you can lift up like this. A little more. He's caught here. The fence in. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. It wouldn't have been much good living the way that horse left him. No, sir. Well, we'll borrow a wagon from Dan and take him back to town. What about the horse? Pretty bad crippled. Yeah. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Marshal! Wait a minute, Marshal! Wait, wait a minute! What is it, Dan? That horse... Don't, don't shoot him. That horse. Oh, now, Dan, he's got to be put away. He's got a broken leg. You know, you can't leave him like this. Uh, but, Marshal, if he's got to be shot, I'll do the shooting. He, he's still my horse. All right, Dan. Come on, Chester. It, it don't it don't seem fair that you had to suffer. I'm I'm awful sorry, boy. Thank you.